Hello guys, welcome back to Moto ADV channel. We hope you guys are doing well. Today we gonna show top 5 best 2024 adventure motorcycles for senior riders first look review, and explain the details of the bike. We hope you guys enjoy it. Please don't forget to subscribe for more videos, thanks for watching. Honda has submitted certification data in Switzerland for updated Africa twin models, with evidence of substantial changes in store for the Adventure Tour. The preliminary data is specifically for new Africa twin Adventure sports models, with both a manual or dual-clutch transmission. The data is only partially complete, but what has been released indicates the Africa twin Adventure sports is getting an updated engine and changes to its chassis. As of this writing, there is no data about updated versions of the non-adventure sports models, but we expect that will be available very soon. The certification filings list a new engine code, SD13E, for the manual Africa Twin Adventure Sports codenamed CRF1100A4 and the DCT version codenamed CRF1100D4. Since the 2020 model year when they changed from the previous 998 cubic centimeters engine to the current 1084 cubic centimeters displacement, the Africa Twin models were certified with the engine code SD080. We can confirm the new engine will remain at the same 1084 cubic centimeters displacement, and that the peak horsepower output remains certified for the same 101 horsepower at 7500 rpm. But the torque output sees a jump from the current 77.4 foot-pounds at 6,250 rpm to 82.6 foot-pounds at 5,500 rpm. The engine isn't the only change coming. According to the certification data, the new model has a wheelbase of 1,570 mm. That's 5 mm, or 0.2 inches, shorter than the Africa Twin's current wheelbase which has remained at 62.0 inches across all variants since the update from CRF-1000L to CRF-1100L for the 2020 model year. If you've been eagerly awaiting the release of the 2024 BMW R1300 GS, then we've got good news for you, because it's finally here. The engine isn't the only thing that's new about this bike, either, as BMW Motorrad basically redesigned the whole concept of its flagship adventure tour from the ground up. The resulting bike weighs a full 26 pounds less than the 2023 R1250 GS, says BMW. Let's dive right in, because there's a lot to discuss. The engine. The 2024 BMW R1300 GS is powered by a 1300cc air and liquid-cooled boxer engine with bore and stroke of 106.5mm by 73mm. It makes a claimed 145 horsepower at 7750 rpm alongside 105 pound-feet of torque at 6,500 rpm. It uses BMW shift cam variable valve timing technology, with intake valves that are 44 mm in diameter and exhaust valves that are 35.6 mm in diameter.
BMW also concentrated on increasing torque throughout the rev range, specifically focusing on the band between 3,600 and 7,800 RPM. There, it says that over 96 pound-feet of torque is consistently available, resulting in a strong pull throughout that should work well in most riding situations. At the same time, BMW says, it managed to keep fuel consumption comparable to the R1250 GS, it's just using its power more efficiently. Top speed is acclaimed 124 miles per hour, and 0 to 62 miles per hour time is listed as 3.39 seconds. Three variants of Versus 1000 will be available to European customers in 2024 with standard S and SE models on offer and two new color options available across what amounts to 12 model options. Offering an entry point into the exciting leader class Versus 1000 stable, the standard model of Versus shares many of the attributes of the other two machines in the range including assist and slipper clutch, electronic cruise control, three-mode Kawasaki traction control plus selectable power modes and integrated anti-lock braking. Additionally, like each machine in the range, the standard machine is also available in a number of addition model types from Kawasaki dealers covering Tourer, Tourer Plus, and Grand Tourer making the overall range option an impressive 12 models. A midpoint in the range, the Versus 1000S replaces the analog-style meter of the standard machine with a full-color TFT display that can also be paired via Bluetooth to the rider's smartphone relaying a vast array of information via the Kawasaki Radiology app. As part of an overall specification that includes an IMU enhanced electronics package, the S adopts a dual direction quick shifter plus LED cornering lights and rider selectable integrated riding modes. And from a practical perspective, a large height adjustable windscreen, handguards and grip heaters all feature in the specification. Topping out the three machine range, plus addition variants, is the Versus 1000 SE encompassing all of the advanced electronic, technical and engineering features of the S model adding an extra layer of rider convenience via the adoption of Showa electronically damped suspension. The much-discussed optical unit split in two, the so-called split face, now seems to be at the end of its days. A new stylistic era is about to arrive at KTM, at least judging by the spy photos circulating on the net. The first pictures of the next one KTM Super Adventure, they date back to last November 2022, but in recent days other images that appeared on the forum. EU forum and taken from social networks and sector publications have been added. The element that immediately catches the eye concerns precisely the front which, as in the case of the Super Duke paparazzi in a prototype guise already last autumn, abandons the element divided lengthwise in two for a new structure based on two LED projectors arranged one above the other. In particular, in the new images of the Super Adventure, the front appears to be even more developed with the daytime running lights forming a sort of LED frame. Furthermore, a cover on the upper lamp suggests the presence of the radar sensor more integrated into the design of the front compared to the current one. They are also original large integrated turn signals which could also have a cornering function. The images suggest that there is no glass to cover the entire optical group and therefore the new face of the KTM 1390 Super Duke could be just that. Sure, cleaning it from the midges will be fun. We think it could also increase the hissing, but will remain in doubt until we have it before our eyes. And speaking of glass and rustling, on the prototype photograph, there is also an additional deflector on the upper part of the windshield, certainly useful for some tests. It's shaping up to be a pretty interesting year for Big Bore Adventure Bike News. As we head into the weeks before the Euro manufacturers typically release their new machines, Ben Purvis over at Bike Social says he's found evidence that KTM is working on a 1390 V twin, presumably to be launched soon. The information comes from poking around KTM's parts ordering system and finding references to a new 1390 engine.
Wait, does that mean we can expect a new KTM 1390 adventure in the very near future, to go with the new BMW or 1300GS, Honda Africa Twin and other expected machines? Not so fast, amigo, Mr. Purvis reckons this new high-power engine is first going into the Super Duke lineup. The Hypernaked series has gone far beyond the standard high-energy Super Duke R model in recent years, with the Super Duke RR, Super Duke R EVO and Super Duke GT rounding out the lineup. Funny, we still remember when KTM leadership was saying high-performance superbikes were a bad idea. The new Suzuki GSX-S1000T looks like a bona fide Kawasaki vs. 1000 killer. Back in 2021, Suzuki stirred the pot with an interesting trademark filing for a new 1000 cubic centimeters motorcycle, dubbed the GSX-S1000T. It would sit between the GSX-S1000 and the GSX-S1000 GT, serving duty as an inline for adventure tourer to rival the Kawasaki vs. 1000. Though Suzuki has remained tight-lipped since then, it looks like the Japanese giant is finally ready to launch the new Gixxer soon. We say this because the first-ever spy shots of the ADV Tourer have now surfaced on the internet, revealing plenty of juicy details. These also hint at an imminent launch by the end of 2023. While we can't use the images, copyright violations for the win, the most noteworthy element in the spy shots is the design. Unlike the naked, the T flaunts brawny bodywork, complete with a massive top fairing and edgy side panels. No, these don't come from the GSX-S1000 GT and feature an all-new shape to set it out from the rest. Also, there's no lower cowl here, as seen on the GT. Other than this, a closer look reveals a new headlight and windscreen. The former has vertically stacked LEDs, reminiscent of the GSX-S1000, while the latter appears to be an all-new unit with manual adjustability. All this time, the latter half of the motorcycle looks exactly like the GT, thanks to the puny exhaust and chunky tail panels. The only addition is the aluminum luggage rack. Like the design, Suzuki has tweaked the riding posture as well. Both the rider and pillion saddles boast thicker padding than the GSX-S1000, while the handlebar now rests a new riser. This, along with the mid-set footrests, should ensure a sporty yet comfy sitting position. That being said, the new Tourer will be slightly harder to live with, credit to its 825mm seat height, 15mm more than its naked sibling. The new seat height is confirmed in Suzuki's trademark filings. Once aboard the saddle, you'll be greeted by a TFT instrument cluster. I see a